Ring Runner's customization can seem a bit daunting for a first timer, but when you realize that what you're doing is the equivalent of equipping and specking a top level character in most MMORPGs, you'll find that the whole process is actually quite streamlined. First things first, let's hop over to the hangar and select a hull to customize. The ships are organized according to their archetypes. Let's pick a grappler. See the prefixes before the ship names? They're not just there for the sake of sci-fi techno babble. They'll tell you the primary archetype, the rank, and the hybrid archetypes, if there is any. As you can see, most rank 5s are hybrids, combining one or more archetypes. This gives Ringrunner billions of possible builds. To keep things simple, let's pick a pure grappler, a G5 Kumo. Now what we're looking at is the ship's template, very similar to a paper doll that you use to equip a character in an RPG. Each of these squares is a node, and the smaller squares right next to them are slots. Different ships will not only have different node configurations, but they will also have a different amount of slots per node. As you may have guessed, different pieces of equipment can take up different amounts of slots. So let's start equipping our Kumo. When you buy a new hull, you'll find that the basic nodes, such as shields, heat sink, power hub, engine, and auxiliary drives, come automatically equipped in a balanced fashion. You can begin modifying here, but since the point of this video is to show you how to build your own ship from scratch, let's use the unequip all button at the top and outfit one of these nodes ourselves. By the way, if you want to re-equip this template, just click on the templates button and select tuned balance from the list. Not gonna last long without shields, so let's pick one. As soon as the node is selected, the list on the right will populate with all relevant options. These lists are always context sensitive to minimize clutter. Since I'm the developer, I get to have everything unlocked. It takes about 100 hours of gameplay before you'll have these many options, but that makes a beginner's choice a bit easier. What we're looking at now is a list of primary equipment. These are large pieces of gear that define your ship's main functions. In RPG terms, you can think of these as a list of equipable shields of various sizes. If we have room left over after equipping one, we can add tassels or trinkets to further modify their use. I'm going to pick a shield that has fast regeneration but a low maximum, as you can see there in the equipment information. If you ever wanted to learn more about an item, just press the info button which is usually just right-clicking or the Y button on the Xbox controller. You can also get information about nodes, options, or most things this way, it's really useful. So let's actually equip the shield. As we saw by inspecting it, the shield comes with an ability that temporarily makes you invulnerable. So let's bind that to a button. You can bind it anywhere you like, and you can always change any of these button options in the binding menu. It's your cockpit, so customize it and fly the way you wanna fly. The slots on the shield node now become filled, but we still have one slot left as you see. The list is populated with components now, those tassels and trinkets I mentioned. Let's add a shield max mod so we don't get obliterated by a sudden spike of damage. Smaller components won't typically add abilities, but they can. You can see the difference they make displayed on the bars above the equipment list. Now let's jump to an archetype specific node. Here I've selected the kinetic drive node that includes jousting and other aggressive maneuvers. Nodes like these will usually not have a primary, so we jump right into a list full of equipment that carry the abilities that make our build unique. Let's pick a joust drive that'll allow us to charge straight forward smashing opponents in our way. Then all we have to do is bind it, and it's good to go. Next, let's choose our archetype ability. Ships are only allowed one of these, and they are denoted by the A icon on the right. I'm going to continue the medieval theme and pick a space flail. Archetype abilities are automatically bound to our directional flick, so there's no need to bind it. The abilities you see here now with a sort of diamond icon next to them are passive, meaning they will automatically take effect. No need to bind them either. And now for some more weapons. We'll skip over to the mining rig and choose one of my favorite abilities, the gamma hammer. Now let's skip ahead in the process. If you want to check your ship's statistics, you can glance up at the bars on the top right. Or for all you min-maxers out there, you can get an in-depth numerical view by clicking on the Ship Info button on the bottom left. Here's what it looks like. You'll notice a very big and informative legend on the right of this screen that describes the meaning of every icon used. I've left two nodes unequipped because I want to give you some information about them. The veterancy nodes are also archetype specific. 
They contain items that work off kill streaks, but they also have really expensive components that provide veterans a bit of vertical improvement over novices. Stuff here can cost as much as a million plex, so it may be a while before you have these many options. Finally, we come to the Corona node, which is the only node that is not ship specific. The choices you make here are equipped directly into your brain, so be prudent. Just like in any other nodes, there are items containing both active and passive abilities. Together, they're what make you a sage. Now that the ship has been equipped, we can save this template out for later use. We can also load it into our aux bays on the top left of our hangar menu, which will allow us to switch to any of these ships when respawning during a match or mission. Including the ship you launch with, you can have up to five builds available to you during a mission. And that pretty much wraps up our very in-depth look at customizing ships in Ringrunner. As you can see, the process is fairly involved, but when you consider the analogs, you'll see that what we've done is consolidated and streamlined the process of equipping, specking, and customizing a high-end character, all while giving you the maximal amount of options and control over your ship.